Have you ever tried watching paint dry? Granted, it's not as entertaining as a good YouTube video, but it's certainly equivalent to an action movie for those people who have the patience needed to watch something for decades and still be waiting in anticipation. Let's find out if you have what it takes to join an incredibly dedicated group of viewers who've been waiting decades to see an incredibly bizarre yet important event you've probably never heard of. What you see here is the pitch drop experiment. After 91 years, it's the longest running scientific endeavor according to Guinness World Records. Back in 1927, Thomas Parnell, a professor at the University of Queensland in Australia, set out to demonstrate to his students that while some substances appear solid, they're actually highly viscous fluids. So he poured a heated substance called pitch into a sealed funnel that allowed the material to cool for three years. Pitch is the term given to a number of natural or manufactured viscoelastic polymers that are derived from plants, petroleum, or coal tar. Some forms of pitch may also be known as bitumen or asphalt. It can be hit with a hammer and reacts much like glass or tile, giving the impression that it's solid. Essentially, Professor Parnell heated up a piece of tar and let it cool in a funnel. Then, in 1930, Professor Parnell cut the funnel seal to let the fun begin. With a large glass dome covering the pitch, it was set on display for all to watch as the substance began to form droplets. The trouble is each drop takes close to a decade to fall, but that hasn't stopped a dedicated following from trying to witness what seems to be the most elusive event on Earth. Due to various environmental issues and the sheer slowness of the drop itself, the exact timing of each drop is quite unpredictable. So seeing the drop fall and hit the beaker below has been a challenge from the beginning. Not a single person has ever witnessed the event happen due to various circumstances. The glass dome sits in a cabinet on the display in the foyer of what is now the Parnell Building at Queensland University. So it's exposed to the room's air temperature, humidity, and pressure. In fact, the drops were falling at an average rate of just over eight years until air conditioning was installed in the building after the seventh drop in 1988. This lowered the average temperature in the room, causing the drops to slow down. And the current rate of flow is calculated to produce a drop about every 13 years. The experiment is so important, it has its own custodians. In the second half of 1961, Professor John Maidstone took over custody of the experiment and has watched over it for 52 years. He became ever so close to becoming the very first person ever to see the pitch drop as the seventh drop fell in 1988. Professor Maidstone, however, was out getting a coffee at Expo 88 and returned to find that the pitch had already fallen. There's a lesson in there somewhere about taking control of your personal vices in favor of life's bigger mysteries. Sadly, Professor Maidstone passed away from a stroke in August of 2013, never having seen it drop. Since then, the custodians of the experiment have attempted to video the experiment to catch it on camera, even if there's nobody there at the time of its falling. However, as the eighth drop came down in November of 2000, something went wrong with the equipment and they didn't catch it then either. That is one sneaky pitch. Then, 156 months later, on April 12th, 2014, the ninth drop touched what was left of the previous drops, but during a beaker exchange to clear the old mess, the drop broke off as the table wobbled when the current custodian, Professor Andrew White, removed the glass jar. The experiment continues though as the next drop is expected to fall anytime between 2020 and 2030. At this point, the experiment is on its 10th drop, and not one person has ever seen it fall while being in the room with it. Still, the experiment is monitored 24 hours a day, 7 days a week by a live internet stream to over 35,000 people registered in 160 countries, and thousands more tune in each year. On average, people spend half a day at a time watching, and the person who has watched the most, who happens to be from New York, has spent over 491 hours with his eyes glued to the screen at last count. While people watch online, visitors can be seen on camera as they pose with a pitch, hoping to be that person to be standing next to it when it happens. You can even place bets on when it will drop. An Australian sports betting website has odds for its dropping time, so you can win some money on what could be the least entertaining event in history. If you don't have the patience to watch on a constant basis though, you can at least catch up a little on the waiting through a two-year time-lapse video that shows just how agonizingly slow the pitch moves. While the Queensland Australia pitch drop experiment is the oldest to never be witnessed falling, another similar experiment out of Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland finally caught their pitch dropping after 69 years as they captured it on video around 5 p.m. on July the 13th, 2013. To date, it's the only drop of pitch ever seen on camera or seen by anyone. Their results concluded that the pitch has a viscosity of about 2 million times that of honey and is about 20 billion times more viscous than water. So basically, as appetizing as it seems, don't drink asphalt.
Aside from the pitch drop, there are other long-running experiments that also need closure. In 1840, an experimental electric bell began ringing and has been chiming almost continuously in the foyer of Clarendon Laboratory at the University of Oxford ever since. The bell is comprised of two voltaic dry piles, which are a form of battery, connected with an insulating layer of sulfur. Even though it's noted to be the world's most durable battery by the Guinness Book of Records, the exact composition of its dry piles is unknown. Still, researchers are afraid of opening the bell, as it would ruin the experiment to see how long it would last. It will eventually stop ringing when either its clapper wears out or its electrochemical energy is depleted. There have been moments when the bell stopped ringing, but it continued on shortly after each pause. If you're looking for a reliable alarm clock, note that this bell does not have a snooze button. It's been going for nearly 180 years, and so far, it has produced approximately 10 billion rings. Apparently, universities love to display their long-running scientific oddities in their foyers. This is another clock that sits in a foyer at the University of Otago in Dunedin, New Zealand. It's called the Beverly Clock. What makes this clock so unusual is that it has not been wound since its creation by Arthur Beverly in 1864. The clock runs on atmospheric and temperature changes as the sealed box inside the clock expands and contracts based on temperature and barometric fluctuations during the day. This pushes on a diaphragm to keep the clock ticking. A 6 degrees Celsius temperature change will raise a 1 pound weight about an inch and as it descends back down, it powers the clock. Although the Beverly clock is stopped on various occasions due to cleaning, mechanical malfunction, and long periods of steady temperatures and pressures, it's the closest anyone has ever come to creating a perpetual motion device which is a machine that powers itself and continues functioning without intervention. So basically, it's an impossible piece of technology. But long-running scientific endeavors don't just come in the form of clocks and dark drops. They also help us observe the world. For instance, the Vesuvius Observatory is the largest volcanic institute in the world and has been monitoring Mount Vesuvius since 1841, trying to predict its next big blast. Best known for its massive eruption in 79 AD, where it buried the ancient Roman city of Pompeii under a thick blanket of hot ash, Mount Vesuvius remains an active volcano that's erupted more than 50 times in its lifespan of several hundred thousand years. The observation outpost was on the side of the mountain until it moved to Naples and had survived a number of eruptions, the last of which was in 1944. Thankfully, the eruption watch continues. Another long-running scientific endeavor that continues today is a germination experiment initiated by botanist William James Beale in 1879. He set out to determine whether seeds would sprout after a long period of dormancy by filling 20 bottles with sand and seed mixed from various plants, burying bottles upside down to keep water out. He started digging up the bottles, one every five years, to plant the seeds to see if they would grow. As he left a map for future scientists to continue his work, the remaining bottles are now dug up once every 20 years. In 2000, two out of 21 plant species found in the bottle sprouted, with the next bottle planned for 2020. The completion of the experiment is set for 2100. I, for one, can't wait to see all the results. Next up, a study that may never end, which began in 1896 on a one-acre plot of land just south of the Auburn University campus of Alabama. The old rotation experiment, as it's listed on the National Register of Historical Places, shows that a crop of cotton and legumes could support a cotton crop indefinitely, with the legumes infusing nitrogen into the soil for the next generation of cotton. Up until 1896, cotton producers had difficulty maintaining their cotton yields because the crop would drain the soil of its nutrients. With the help of this experiment, started by Professor J. F. Duggar, we now know that when planting cotton with legumes, we can keep the soil rich and the cotton growing. Now let's touch on a long-lasting medical study. The Framingham Heart Study has been an ongoing experiment for over 65 years and counting. Started by Dr. Thomas Dauber in 1948, under the direction of what was then called the National Heart Institute, it was established to identify the common factors that contribute to cardiovascular disease, a leading cause of death in the United States. A total of 5,209 men and women were recruited in the town of Framingham, Massachusetts, and every two years, the subjects returned for a detailed medical review. In 1971, the study enrolled the next generation of participants, as 5,124 of the original group's children and their spouses became part of the medical examinations. By 1994, a second group was enrolled to provide a more diverse community from which to gather information, and in 2002, the grandchildren of the original participants became part of the study. The study has led to significant findings over the years, like identifying early on in the 1960s that cigarette smoking increases your risk of heart disease, and that so-called high normal blood pressure increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. The study aims to continue researching and discovering new medical breakthroughs about our physical and mental health, 
attempting to limit and even prevent cardiovascular disease. That's great work by the medical team and the entire town of Framingham. I can't even get to the doctor for an annual medical appointment. So which experiment did you find the most interesting? Better yet, let me know about something you've waited so long to see but never have. Till next time, thanks for watching.